Hey there, I'm Sarah from Simply Steam. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm sharing three life cycle of a frog activities for kids. You can do these with your elementary students in grades first, second, or third, or fourth, or fifth. <laughs> Before we get started, I have some amazing facts about frogs that I wanna share. First, did you know that frogs can absorb oxygen through their skin? Yeah, that's right. Their skin is super special and super sensitive too. Did you know that a frog can jump 20 times the length of its body? That's what makes it so evasive to its predators. And third, did you know that some frogs have teeth in the back of their mouth? Yeah, it's kind of weird. Hey, and don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notification bell so that you know when I'm posting these new videos. I love teaching about the frog life cycle. And that is because one of my favorite teaching memories was I had my students at lunch and it was pouring down raining. We felt defeated walking back to my classroom because it was our recess time and we couldn't go out to play except for it stopped raining and the sun came out. So we all gathered around the window to look outside and see if it was too wet for us to play or not. We looked down and our ditch was completely filled with water. I heard gasps <gasps> from some of my students and they said, Miss Barnett, there's something in the ditch. And it looked like something was swimming in it. And I'm not kidding you, this thing was about this big. Me being curious and not wanting to miss out on what it was, I decided not to use the exit door that was about a hundred yards from our classroom door and instead I jumped out of the window. I had on white pants and I jumped out of the window and I got down in the muddy ditch in my white pants and rolled those suckers up and reached down to grab a huge bullfrog. This was a really awesome opportunity for me to show my students up close and personal of what a frog looks like. And we saw these enormous webbed feet. So this brings us to our first activity that you can do with your kids. And that is to have a group debate about whether swimming or jumping is the better self-defense mechanism. Would you rather be a better swimmer or a better jumper? This debate is really fun to do and you can even create persuasive essays on which one you'd rather be. Teach students to use their reasoning to support their answers. So give three reasons why would you rather be a better swimmer or give three reasons why would you rather be a better jumper? This one's so fun. It doesn't require anything but a little bit of information about frogs and their predators and opportunities for students to share their ideas. I love citizen science. When I found this website called Frog Watch USA, I knew that we had to do this in my classroom. Frog Watch USA is a citizen science project where you can teach your students how to listen for frog sounds. And so you have to go outside and sit like this for three minutes so that the frogs can get acclimated to you being out there because trust me, they know you're there. Once they know that you're not a threat, they will start croaking. Then you can have your students identify those sounds and record it and you input the information to Frog Watch USA. This allows the scientists to know what species are thriving in all different regions of the USA. So not only can you tie in your science standards for life cycle of a frog, but you can also tie in mapping and geology and talk about how weather might be affecting some of these areas. So there's so many different science standards in second grade that you can tie in with this citizen science project which is why I love it. Okay, so we were just talking about the fact that frogs can jump 20 times further than their actual length. When I think about that bullfrog and how enormous it was, it blows my mind to think that it could actually jump like 20 feet, right? Okay, but it's up to. That brings me to the next activity, and that is the frog long jump. So when I was a little girl and I was in track and field, we had this thing called the standing long jump. It was also called 
the standing broad jump. You stand there at a line and you jump as far as you can, not to toot my own horn, but I was sixth place in the state of Georgia. This frog jump challenge is so fun. Students will explore counting 20 times. You can use counting tiles or even the little bear to record how many it would be for a frog to go 20 times and use the counting tiles to have students explore how many would be 20 times. So if a frog, for instance, is three tiles long, how far would it jump if it were 20 times that amount? This is a hands-on real world approach to solving mathematical problems. You can use repeated addition for this and obviously multiplication. After that, students are going to record their height and multiply that by 20 to see how far they would jump if they were a frog. Then students jump on their own in the standing long jump competition to see how close they get to jumping like a frog. It is so funny to watch kids do this. If you don't wanna do this indoors and you'd rather go outside and do it, I suggest go into a swing set. I did this with the kids in my community because it's fun. And we did a long jump competition from the swing set where we were measuring and it was so much fun. I felt like such a kid. 10 out of 10 recommend and I will be doing it again. If you are looking for some helpful resources to give you instruction, then I have some really great frog life cycle reading passages with comprehension questions embedded in that resource. I have printable worksheets that go along with a frog jump competition. I also have a frog life cycle spinner included in that. If you just want something simple, I also have a really simple frog life cycle flip book that you can do with your students in one day or in multiple sessions. I'm gonna link those in the description. Hey, if you're teaching life cycles, why don't you head on over to my playlist where I share a whole bunch of activities for other animal life cycles that you can do with your students. Well, now that I've shared those activities, I would love to know which one of those activities are you willing to try in your classroom? Comment below and let us know. Next month, we are going to be diving into end of year activities and ideas and party themes. So I can't wait to see you for that. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Well, that's all for this week and I'll see you soon.